So we had a rather exhaustive study of forming signs in the previous session. Now let's look at how to form equations given real life situations. We did have a, I just gave a hint of how to go about doing things like these. Now again, once again, we start with the general example. Let's take a case wherein we say that the number of boys and girls together in a class should not be more than 40. So you, if the number of boys is going to be X and the number of girls is going to be Y, should not be more than 40, which would mean it is either 40 or less than 40. So we write it as X plus Y is less than or equal to 40. And similar cases like these. Now, this is just a brief example. Let's go into real examples which will really help us understand how to form equations for practical uh, uh, cases in daily life. Let's start with the first example here. So let's take this particular example. The cost of five mangoes and two apples can be at the most rupees 36. Now when we say it's at the most rupees 36, we are saying at the most, which would mean cannot cross 36, which could mean it is either less than or equal to 36. So if you take the cost of each mango as x and each apple as y or vice versa, so the option total cost is going to be 5x plus 2y. And since we are saying it is at the most 36, it has to be either less than or equal to 36. So the correct option here is not this, it's not this, so it's going to be this. This would have been the option if it is told cost of 5 mangoes and 2 apples is less than 36. So our answer is going to be 5x plus 2y is less than or equal to 36. So let's see and we have yes 5x plus 2y is less than 36. Let's get along with the next example. <clears throat> For a student to move to the next level, his aggregate in two subjects should be at least 105. This is represented by what? Now, when we are talking about at least, it means either you get 105 or you get more than 105. That is a minimum eligibility. So, it has to be greater than or equal to 105 or 105. So, if in one subject he gets x and the other subjects he gets y, his aggregate is x plus y has to be greater than or equal to 5. And hence, among these options, it is definitely this one. x plus y is greater than or equal to 105. And yes, that is the next. That's the answer for this particular question. Moving over to the next Example, you have an employer recruits experienced and fresh workmen. Experienced workmen, the number is X, and fresh workmen, Y, for his firm, under the condition that he cannot employ more than seven people. Now, how do we say more than seven people can be translated as maximum or at most? So that means it has to be X plus Y is either 7 or less than 7 but it cannot be more than 7 so obviously among these this is the answer and if we check yes that is the answer let's take still simpler examples these are all simple examples as to how we form equations now let's take this particular case on the average experienced persons do an experienced person, one single person does five units of work while a fresh one does three units of work daily, but the employer has to maintain an output of at least 60 units of work per day. So when you're saying at least 60, again, it could be either greater than 60 or less than or greater than 60, definitely not less than 60. So if there are x people doing 5 units of work, so it will be 5x and there are y people doing 3 units of work, the total work, total number of units of work will be 5x plus 3y and the total output 
Now, what is the unit of work? Maybe it's manufacturing a, a particular small machine or something. So the total number of uh, total number of units of work will be 5x plus 3y. And since it has to be at least 60, our answer is going to be 5x plus 3y is greater than or equal to 60. So among these, this is the answer, which we confirm and say, yes, this is right. Now, on similar basis, we have the next one. The rules and regulations demand that the employer should employ not more than seven experienced hands to fresh one, to one fresh one, and this fact can be expressed as what? Now, we know that the employee, the experienced number of experience is going to be x, and hence we have x upon y that is the ratio of the experience to y should not be more than seven experienced. That means it has to be less than or equal to seven. The ratio is seven is to one. That means the ratio of the experience to the inexperienced is either seven is to one or less than seven is to one. So if you cross multiply, since it's a positive number, we don't have to worry about the change in the inequation so it has to be x is less than or equal to 7y or we can even write it as y greater than or equal to x by 7 which because x by 7 is less than or equal to y both mean the same so both this or this now among these if we have options over here you have so we have x is less than or equal to 7, y, or y is greater than or equal to x by 7. So we have this particular option and you have this particular option, two options. Now what do we do in such cases? It's an MCQ and we need to consider only one. So by default, the correct, the first among the two in order which one is correct is considered to be right. So we have two options here. But we can take the first one, y greater than or equal to x by 7 as the correct answer. And let's check that. And yes, we do have two options. So in further continuation of the example, we have a case. The union, however, forbids him to employ less than three experienced person to each fresh person. Let's consider again the ratio of x to y. That is the ratio of experienced to inexperienced person. It is says that him to employ less than three experience that means the ratio of x by y has to be uh, that is the ratio of x by y the ratio of the experienced person to each fresh person person the employee less than three experienced person that means the ratio of experienced to inexperienced has to be So here it says the union, however, forbids him to employ less than three. That is the number of the ratio has to be such that less than three, it has to be either three or more than three. That means the ratio of experienced to inexperienced people has to be three, has to be greater than three or equal to three. Hence, we have a case that is x by y is either greater than 3 or equal to 3. So this means that x is greater than or equal to 3y, which also means that y is less than or equal to x by 3, if you cross multiply over here, or x by 3 is greater than or equal to y. So we have y less than or equal to x by 3, which happens to be this particular case. Let's check what the answer is. And we have the other option also, which is the same as x greater than or equal to 3y. Let's take more examples here. We have a case. Now we have a slightly big problem. You have a car manufacturing company manufactures cars of two types, A and B. Model A requires 150 man hours. So there are three issues involved here when it comes to manufacturing of a particular car. So we have assembling involved here. There is painting and checking and testing. So 
Model A requires 150 man hours for assembling, 50 man hours for painting and 10 man hours for checking and testing. So we can possibly make a small grid for this. So we can take, uh, we have model A, model B and we have assembling and we have painting and we have checking and testing. So if you look at model A, it requires 150 man hours for assembling and for painting it requires 50 hours and 10 man hours for checking and testing. And for B, there are 60 man hours for assembling and 40 man hours for painting and you have 20 man hours for checking and testing. So we have 20 man hours. But it is told that there are available total available time is 30,000 man hours for assembly and 13,000 man hours for painting that is this and 5,000 man hours for checking the total available time. So that means that the total time has to be either less than each of this or maximum there is a maximum time evolved involved is this so basically it's going to be 150 x plus 60 y if you take it and 50 x plus 40 y is less than or equal to 13,000 10 x plus 20 y is less than or equal to 5,000 and since it's a real life example whatever is x has to be greater than or equal to 0, y has to be greater than or equal to 0. So, which means the number of hours is going to be this. So, it's going to be a combination of this, this, this and this. So, if you look at it, 150x plus 60y is less than or equal to 30,000. If you divide throughout by maybe 30, you're going to get 5x. The first equation is going to be 5x plus 2y is less than or equal to 1000. Second one, if you divide throughout by 10, you get 5x plus 4y is less than or equal to 1300. The last one, divide throughout by 10 and you get x plus 2y is less than or equal to 500. So it's going to be these three along with x is greater than or equal to 0, y greater than or equal to 0. Remember x and y are the uh, number of units that are made. So we have 5x, so 5x plus 2y less than or equal to 1000. So among these definitely the first one and the last one are out. So tie is between these two. So it is definitely this particular example because it's told <coughs> there is a confusion over here. You should not make it greater than because it is told total time available, which means the maximum time available, which means that at most, so it has to be less than or equal to throughout for each of these conditions, except for x is greater than or equal to zero and y is greater than or equal to zero. Now that was a slightly elaborate example that we had over here. Now this is similar to the example that we did earlier, the rules and regulation demand that the employer should employ not more than five experienced hands to one fresh one. So that is again, we can just quickly go through this. We have x by y is not more than, that means it is less than or equal to five. So which means that x is less than or equal to five y or you have uh, x upon five is less than or equal to y. Oh which means among these you have y, y is greater than x by 5 is one possibility and you have x is less than or equal to 5y. So these two combinations could work, which of course, as I told earlier, consider the first case. Let's check this. Yes, this is a particular case that is fine. So these are the <clears throat> immense number of examples that we have done when it came to drawing a graph, forming equations, solving an inequation as well as forming signs and finally 
forming the inequation. With this, we come to an end of the section concerned with inequations and we'll move over to just to a brief recount of all the points. We'll conclude what we did. So let's check what and all, what are the things that we covered in this particular topic as a conclusion. Let's give a quick run 